Jousting on the water has been a tradition in Set for more than three centuries. For a week every summer, this small city on the Mediterranean coast in southern France holds tournaments and parties. The spectacular and sometimes violent custom is a celebration of the city's history. In August, in the week preceding Saint Louis Day, named for the city's patron, the people of Set commemorate their history. In 1660, King Louis XIV wanted Set to become a port. The first stone to be laid was named after King Louis IX, also known as Saint Louis. Since 1702, we've celebrated Saint Louis in Set. It started when St. Louis was preparing to leave for the Crusades. The soldiers jousted, not on horseback, but on the water. In 1666, the port was inaugurated, and there was a tournament with the fishermen from Aigues Mort. Ever since then, we've jousted it in set. People can joust at any age. Early on, children practiced jousting using small wheeled carts. At the age of nine, the most daring can go on the tenten, the raised deck where the jouster stands. These jousts are not folklore, but popular tradition. Everyone in set participates in one way or another. Pointe Courte is one of the most picturesque neighborhoods in set. About 30 families reside here. They make their living from fishing and oyster farms. All the rowers on the boats of the St. Louis come from here. Their hangout is the local cafe. There are the jousting champions and the rowers. There are guys like me who gather the shields. Water is the soul of this tradition. If you take the oars out of the joust, the game loses all its meaning. I provide a kind of logistical support. In every army, you need men to carry the equipment and others to follow so that the war or the tournament can continue. I pick up the arms which fall in the water and bring them back to the Tintan. In the beginning, the rowers were professional fishermen. It's very difficult to row for five hours in the sun on the jousting boats. They mustn't stop moving because then the men can't joust. It's really hard to move a boat which weighs about five tons. You need ten good rowers used to doing heavy work, like fishermen. The water tournament has its own history and heroes. Jacques Castiazuelo has won the St. Louis tournament five times. It's like the World Cup, it's the most important thing in our region. Whoever wins the St. Louis is a great champion. When you've won even once, it's like you've won everything. People expect a lot from me because I came in first in 95 and 96, so they'll be watching me this year. He's the dark horse of the tournament. When he comes onto the platform, people say, we've got to beat this guy. But they never manage. He can break a lance using just his own strength. The worst blow of all for the people of Set is that the champion doesn't even come from their city. He's from Frontignan, a small village about 10 kilometers away. Set and Frontignan are rivals because Frontignan has won the jousts 11 out of the last 16 years. Of course, it hurts when you take away their grand prize 11 times. The people of Set are proud of their city, its past, and its two most famous citizens, the singer Georges Brassens and the poet Paul Valéry. Valéry made the fishermen's cemetery known throughout the world. The cemetery has one of the best views of the port and the sea, and it's where the writer wished to be buried.
The Tau Basin on the other side of the city is a pond 20 kilometers long and 7 kilometers wide. It's fed by fresh and salt water, a perfect place to raise oysters and mussels. In the tow pond, we grow between 14 and 16,000 tons of oysters and between 8 and 10,000 tons of mussels. More raw shellfish is eaten in France than anywhere else on Earth. We start by gathering the loose mussels into a net. Inside the net, there's paper that the mussels can hold on to. Then we put them in the farms. When the paper disintegrates after a few days, the mussels are hanging on to each other. Shellfish isn't Set's only specialty. There's also fish, and especially sardines. Set is the most important sardine fishing port in France, with about 6,000 tons of sardines caught here every year. It used to be an important sardine canning industry here, but today it's gone. So we decided to create a sardine museum in the city to symbolize this type of Mediterranean fishing. We wanted to bring alive the folklore, heritage, history and ethnology, as well as the sardines' culinary and gastronomic traditions. I became interested in sardines by looking at labels on cans. I looked for different movements in contemporary art. There is one label which shows Greek mythology with a make-believe sardine goddess. What's interesting is that these sardine labels lie all the time. They aren't serious. They're always trying to pretend to have something inside other than little sardine bodies and oil. The sardine is the joke of fish. It's where Alpha finds Omega, like a circus mirror. Every time you think of it, what you imagine is different from the truth. It's the crazy person's fish. For example, there's an old European tradition called the sardine burial. It still exists in Spain, where a sardine is buried on Ash Wednesday, the day after Carnival. They take one of these worthless little fish and treat it as though it were a lord. The men are dressed like women, the women are dressed like men, the old are dressed like the young. Everything is its opposite. In Set, there isn't a sardine burial, but when you talk about sardines, how can you be serious? It's an unusual museum where you can eat the exhibits. It's a way of seeing the cultural heritage of the sardine through the different ways of preparing it. I like potted sardines and mousse made from sardines and oil. You get the culture of the Brittany sardine mixed with local butter. These potted sardines are where the land meets the sea. Today, as every day, the trawlers return to the port, escorted by flocks of seagulls. The fishermen unload their cargo. Lots of sardines, of course, but that's not all. Octopus, for example, is the main ingredient in one traditional dish of set called tiel. For the past 60 years, the same family has jealously guarded its secret recipe for making it. Tiel was once a dish for the poor, but now it's a delicacy. It was originally an Italian recipe, home cooking from the south. My grandmother brought it to Set in 1937 and started selling it here. Oh, 
The tomato sauce is traditional, with tomato paste, garlic and parsley. We let it simmer for a long time. Afterwards, we add octopus and prepare our sauce for the tiel. A few minutes in the oven and the tiel is ready to serve. On the canals, the jousts continue. They will go on late into the night. Tomorrow, the major tournament will start. In the meantime, there are other competitions. This is how young jousters gain experience and learn techniques which will allow them to take part in the St. Louis. When two jousters fall down at the same time, it's called making the bouquet. They're both eliminated. long, accompanied by the sound of oboes and drums, the competitors battle until only one is left standing. <laughs> Meanwhile, a surprising, spellbinding atmosphere settles over the city. Set aims to revive the ambiance of medieval festivals. The city becomes the backdrop for a boisterous party, lit up by fireworks. Kilometers away, in Aigues another party celebrates the departure of St. Louis for the Crusades. In 1248, the King of France led his army to seize Jerusalem and take over Christ's tomb. He started out from the walled city of Aigues The expedition lasted a year and ended in failure. St. Louis' offensive was stopped in Egypt. He never reached Jerusalem. Finally, the big day arrives. The Frontignon jousters gather for a huge breakfast. It will be a long day for these modern knights. 
Instead of just calling us knights, they call us the Knights of the Tintin, which is the wooden platform at the back of the boat. In the old days, they jousted with horses, but we do it on the Tintin. A jouster holds his lance like this. If his hand slips from the force of the blow and moves into the white, even just a centimeter, he gets what's called an observation. After that, there's a warning. The third time around, he's out. If his hand moves right into the colored band, which often occurs, he's automatically disqualified. At the end of the lance is the trident. It looks intimidating if you don't know what it's for. It has to be as sharp as possible, because if the tip is rounded, when it hits the shield, it won't pierce the wood. The lance could slip and hit you in the face. If your opponent strikes here, on this part of the shield, that's a warning. If your opponent hits here, he is automatically disqualified. Of course, it's the same if he hits high or low. This is the only part where you're allowed to joust. If the jouster is standing firm with his legs apart, you take him inside. You see what I mean? If he comes straight forward, you try to make him fall to the side. There are many techniques, it's hard to explain them all briefly. Pierre-Francois is a renowned painter from Set. He has been chosen to draw the poster for the Saint Louis Day this year. To catch the spirit of the jousts, I used blue, red, yellow, white and black. The primary colors that catch the eye. These are the boats. The blue and red ones are painted in the opposite colors, green and purple. The flags, drums and oboes are here. The music is very important because it gives rhythm to the rowers. At the end of the ladder is the jouster with his shield and lance. It's a violent, even dangerous sport, because the lances have a metal point. When two boats meet, each lance has close to 400 kilograms of force behind it. 400 kilograms with the jouster's strength and the boat's momentum. It's a very powerful game. The poster is then replicated on the Shield of Honor, which will go to the victor. Every year, we have to reproduce the poster on the shield. What's hard is knowing where the painter started. You have to undo his work to find the beginning. Sometimes, I look at a painting for two weeks before I can copy it. I learn it by heart until it's in my head and I know how to start, which color is underneath so the pink looks like that. What the painter has done spontaneously, I do differently. I take it apart and put it back together like a clock. She took a flat image and sculpted it. You see how the letters are stretched out? It's a continuous painting. Look at the flags. It's very beautiful. The festival of Saint Louis is very important to us here in Set. The poster is part of the game, like the fireworks, the bicycle race, the jousts, the street performers, and all the music. I'm happy to be a part of this great party. This is the last parade before the tournament. 
Leading the march are the oboes and drums. Behind them are Jacques Castillazuelo and the other jousters, all wearing the immaculate white outfits of the St. Louis. A noisy and passionate crowd has already gathered around the Royal Canal, while two barges, one red and one blue, begin their traditional opening dance of the tournament. In the stands, on little boats, or even in the water, the people of Set have come to cheer on their champions. Some have been waiting all night. They've spent hours under the sun, sitting on the bleachers, ready to encourage the rowers and jousters. Every year, 15,000 spectators come to support their Knights of the Tenten. balance, each jouster must plant his feet on the platform. He wedges a shoulder against the shield, holds the lance firmly, and stands still awaiting the shock. Each jouster must win three consecutive victories in order to go to the final. Finally, it's the champion's turn, Jacques Castillazuelo, nicknamed Mayu. He wins the first challenge without any problem. He smiles and the fans stamp their feet. the second round. Neither jouster has fallen, but each has made an error. The jury deliberates. The jouster in the red barge passes the color mark three times and is disqualified. The jouster in the blue barge touched the shield in the wrong place and is disqualified. The people of Set are thrilled. The champion from Frontignan has committed an error and is out of the competition. The jury stands firm. Jacques waves to his fans one last time. At last, the final. The jouster in the blue barge is disqualified. The knight in the red barge can raise his arms in victory for he is the king of the Saint Louis.
Like Jacques Castillazuelo, the champion is from Frontignan. This year, once again, the Shield of Honor will leave set.